In today's presentation, we're going to be chatting about how we can incorporate media and perhaps social media into our websites for our term projects. On the syllabus where it outlines all the requirements for the term project, I discussed that you're supposed to have at least one multimedia element uh, included into your term project. Multimedia, we're going to discuss what that is in, in a second, but basically it's perhaps video or perhaps audio should be embedded into your term project, uh, the website for your term project. So that's what the purpose of this video is, is just to discuss how you can incorporate it and um, because it's probably one of the last things that you're going to be doing right before you submit your term project to the class. So for our purposes, it might be trailers to movies, uh, but some of you I know are perhaps interested in including some social media things as well. So here we're going to be discussing things like what is media, what is online media, what is social media, and how we can utilize social media on our sites, and how we can add media and or social media to our websites. So what is media? Well, if this was a marketing class, my answer would be different. If this was an advertising class, my answer would be different. If this was an education class, my answer would be different. But what I want to portray here is that it really depends on the context. For our purposes, it's content like text, images, audio, video. Uh, in my field, as an instructional designer, we often call it multimedia. That's basically the mixing of text, images, audio, and video. But for our purposes, we're going to be talking about how we can put it online. You may hear it called uh, digital media. Um, but for our purposes, it's basically something that transmits content like text, images, audio, and video on the web. In my field, instructional design, this social media is often called Web 2.0. You know, over the last 10 years, this term has become ubiquitous and perhaps overused. There's even a varying interpretation of what Web 2.0 actually means. Often calling something 2.0 or 3.0 would indicate that there's, you know, a new version of something, or in our case, a new version of the web. For our purposes here in this class, what I want us to kind of think about in terms of social media, it's as a new way for our users to interact with the content that we've been discussing. You know, text, images, video, uh, audio, and, and more so the way that they're interacting with it, they're interacting with it in a social way. So now you're probably thinking, you know, which ones do I choose? You, you're probably familiar with social media, you're probably involved with uh, some social media as well yourself. You're probably thinking, you know, which ones do I choose? Which ones do I choose from my site? Well, don't be overwhelmed. Uh, there's so many ways for users to interact with each other and with the content. And yes, we do have to choose, but the point is, for our purposes here in this class, don't be overwhelmed. It's important for us to realize that there's not one social media tool out there that really is a best fit for our site. Um, some sites might need to use various tools based on their users and what their users need to do. Um, some sites could get away with just using one tool. It really depends on the users and their needs. Uh, I'm sure you've heard me say many times, you know, it's always about the user and their needs and what they need to do on your site. So how do we figure out what tools for them to use? So to help us sift through everything that's out there on the net, um, I came up with this uh, periodic table of the, <laughs> of the internet. Um, it divides what's out there on the internet into 18 different groups. Instead of solid, liquid, or gas, we have search engines, blogs, social networking, etc. Each element or tool would have a site URL, an abbreviation, and have the Google's page rank. For example, check out the ever-popular Facebook. It's within the 14th grouping entitled Social Networking. It has the symbol FB, which stands for Facebook, and it has a Google page rank of 29. Just kidding. Aren't infographics fun? I thought you guys would like this. So putting all humor aside, how can we utilize social media on our sites? That's what we're going to talk about. So there really is two different ways, or in a sense, two different frameworks for us to think about in terms of how we can utilize social media. It's important for us to basically ask ourselves a question, you know, who is doing the sharing? Okay, who's doing the sharing? Is it the client? For our currently the client, you don't hear me use that term a lot in this course, but essentially we're right now we're we are our own client. In the future, in your as you develop your future career as a web designer, you know, you're going to be working for someone. You're going to be working for a client, helping them build their site. But for right now, we are our own clients. So is the client sharing content on a social media site for their users to access? Client sharing social media content on, or a client sharing content on a social media site for their users to access, rather than perhaps sharing it on their site. Okay? Or are we making it effortless for the user to go onto our sites and share our content on our site with through social media on another site. Okay, so is it a user sharing the client's content on a social media site? So these are basically two different frameworks that I'd like us to kind of discuss. 
not that any one of these is more difficult than the other, but I'm guessing for our purposes, for this class, for this term project, what our goal will be is to um, share with our users content on social media sites and basically just embed it on our sites. So instead of taking, going out and filming a video, uploading it to lab webs, and then having some sort of skin that the users can use to play the video on our site, what we're going to do is we're just going to basically send the users out to, to send the users out to YouTube to watch the video, essentially. Now we're not going to do that with a link, we're going to actually embed it, because basically our site is going to be coded, so that's kind of like a window to see that video, but they're watching that video from YouTube. Okay, so what we're doing is, us as a client, we're putting content on a social media site for our users to be able to access. Okay, but I am going to talk about both the other options as well, because perhaps you're interested in that. So there's a couple different options for uh, having our client or ourselves sharing content on a social media site. The first one that I'd like to show you is perhaps just having a logo button or an icon that links to perhaps a profile or a page, uh, etc. So to find buttons, what you could basically do is go to Google and you could type something like Facebook button. Let's see, Facebook, Facebook button, and then you can click on images. And this is an example of a button that you could basically download this image and then put the image on your page and then you can image map it or link the image. If you link the image, make sure that you uh, create a special class so that you're not having a, a blue border around your image. Um, but anyways, yeah, so you could basically have a button. Uh, perhaps you could then have that button link out to uh, a place where you have content stored somewhere else. So that's one option. Perhaps the most popular content for this class and our purposes is just to embed content that's stored on a social media site, for example, like a YouTube video. So to share a YouTube video, what you could do is you can basically go to YouTube And then you could find a video that you want to share. So perhaps you want to share uh, a JFK speech. So you find the JFK speech that you want to share. Uh, one of my favorites is, you know, we should go to the moon, not because it is difficult, but because it is hard. So let's say we go here, and I'm going to pause it. But basically, you could go to share. And then it gives you options. You could share via email. You could share it via social networking, which we're kind of talking about. Or you can embed it. And for our purposes, what you would do is you would just paste this um, iframe code uh, into the HTML of your page. Um, great thing about YouTube is that it doesn't actually embed any extra uh, advertisement junk that we saw, like for example, with the imagemaps.com. So you could basically just copy and paste this code. It's already selected for you, so you just copy it. So that would be Control C. Um, or you could right click on it and then go to Copy and then you would just paste it into the code of your website and then it would basically give a window of your website uh, that would look to this video here. So that's one. That's another option. A little bit more complicated is you can actually embed perhaps a badge, a widget, or some sort of plugin that directs the users to content that's built on a social media site. So this is a little bit more complex because you're kind of like embedding like this package uh, of something that you can actually uh, put on your page and your your page will be coded so that it could see like perhaps this Twitter widget or something like that so you'd see basically someone's Twitter feed it doesn't have to be your Twitter feed but maybe it could be a client's Twitter feed so to, f to be able to get this widget uh, you can go to Google and you can just type Twitter widget lots of other sites offer widgets uh, so we're gonna go here to Twitter forward slash widgets and then Widgets for perhaps Facebook, well no, because we're not building our sites on Facebook, we're building them for our website, so you click on website, and then there's different options for widgets. Um, let's say you wanted a profile widget, and then you could basically set up, and this is what the widgets can essentially look like uh, on your page, and this would just, all this is going to be doing is just showing the, the Twitter feed for the, for the account that you choose to do, and this will walk you through all of, it'll, it'll, by going through this tutorial, it'll walk you through how to finish and grab the code, so that's another option. Now to shift gears a little bit, now what we want to do is we want to talk about how we can get make it easy for our users to share the content that's on our site on their social media. One of the clever ways to do that is to embed just like a sharing button. We've seen things like Facebook, stuff like that, but let's take a look at LinkedIn. So what we're going to look for is we're going to look for the LinkedIn plugin. LinkedIn plugin. We're going to go into the LinkedIn developer network. Um, so th this would be a case like you want 
because uh, what we're wanting to do is, you know, our users share content from our site um, with their LinkedIn. Um, in this case, this gives an example of users being able to apply for jobs uh, using their LinkedIn profiles. Uh, for our purposes, I, well, actually, not really for our purposes. I doubt you're going to want LinkedIn use LinkedIn for for your movie project, movie fan movies on your fan uh, website, but perhaps you know. Uh, you might want to use uh, Facebook, but this is just an example to use LinkedIn to show you something different. Um, so what you would have here, you'd have this plugin that would then, you know, allow users to uh, click on perhaps a blog post or something that you had on your website, and then it would share it on LinkedIn, so they would share it on their profile. And this just kind of like shows, you know, uh, it's been shared so many different times. And then if you keep scrolling down, there's other options for sharing, uh, similar to how we talked about before, where uh, sharing content on a social media site. Uh, on your website, it's kind of like the content being your profile, uh, but this is an option to put, you know kind of put like a business card on your a business card on your website. So maybe if you're making like portfolio type website, you might want to do that. But that's kind of like what we were talking about previously. But for our purposes, remember we're talking about sharing content on our website, the ability for users to share content on our website on uh, another social media site. So maybe you're thinking, wow, which one do I choose? Do I have to do them all? Well, a really cool sharing widget that's out there is the Add This sharing widget, which basically would allow you a, a user to have this one little quick uh, module where they can just easily choose all the different networks that they might want to share or even have their the content that they're wanting to share share on multiple networks. So to get the Add This plugin, you can go to Google and you could type Add This. So basically what it's going to end up looking like, it's going to be kind of like, um, you know, having this kind of widget pop up. That's something that you could do. Um, let's see. See this See this whole little custom thing? Try our new sharing tool. Uh, see this here? This, this whole little package here, this whole little widget would be installed on your site. And that would allow users to share your content on Pinterest, uh, perhaps tweet it, perhaps like it, uh, get the code for your site. So you can click on that. Just to kind of give you an example, you will have to log in. Um, I don't want to log in. Let me show you. So, so for example, um, get to add this for a website. Uh, that's what you would want to choose, and then you choose a different style. So you look at all these different styles, and there's also lots of customization. And then what you're going to be doing is you're going to be basically embedding uh, this embed code on your site for this widget. Um, I have seen this site be down a couple, not, not down, but I have seen the code, like I guess they've updated the code on their end, but not updated the code on the site a couple times, so it hasn't worked quite properly. And um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, again, this isn't a requirement for this class, just you know, an option to think about. Because our goal is always to make the user's experience as effortless as possible, and then why, you know, you embedding all of these different buttons uh, for users to share, we, you know, we can just make it easy for them and have it in this one nice slick package. So it's easy for you and it's easy for them. So that's just you know one final option that I wanted to show you. So how can we add media and social media to our sites? Well, I've already basically shown you a couple different avenues for do that. To do that, you don't have to do them all. You really, essentially, for the purposes of our term project and what it described in the syllabus, you really only have to do this once. So perhaps for you, that might just be a movie trailer. Um, so to just demonstrate that, I'm going to show us how to add a movie trailer to, by basically adding one to my Hio site. So I'm going to type the trailer that I want to add. Tales of Earthsea is one of the recent Miyazaki movies that I really enjoyed, and I'd like to add this trailer to my website. So I'm going to click Share, I'm going to be embedding it, right click, click Copy. So now that I have that code, I can go into my HIO site. Let me show you. This is what my HIO site currently looks like. And what I'm going to be doing, this is the home page. And then, again, this is just a very basic site, uh, nothing fancy. And I haven't really been developing out all the content for it. But what I want to do is I'm going to add that uh, movie trailer right here. Just Actually, I'll just change this to say um, Tales of Mercy trailer. So let me open this up. It's going to be on my movies page. Remember, this is my root level, so I'm going to open my movies page in Notepad. Scroll down, and I'm going to call this Tales of Ursi. Trailer. I'm going to leave some text. Paste in the iframe code. You see, I just pasted that. And then let's say I want to talk about it a little bit more after with my users. Paste that down here. 
click Save, bring up my Movies page, and I'm going to refresh it. So now we have the Tales of Mercy trailer right here on my site for my users to enjoy. So the users can actually play it right here within within the site. So basically all this really is, like I've been saying, this is just a window. YouTube calls it iframe, but this is just a window that's basically kind of like an image. All we're Because, you know, we're not actually putting the actual image in the code. All we're doing is we're just coding a specific window for our users to be able to get that video because they're being directed here to YouTube. Now, as you're embedding things, you know, always look for advertisements and extra junk. YouTube is just amazing. I mean, this is literally all it is to embed a YouTube video. So that's great. So enjoy embedding videos on your pages. It could be something simple as this to get full credit for that aspect of the term project. And uh, let the class or I know if you have any questions. Have a good rest of your week.